power, and glory. This is our lives we're fighting for. And this week on At The Movies, from superstars to superheroes, we're celebrating the outstanding performances of the year that was. Here's my card. What are you on? The best movies of 2008. Good luck keeping on. We say goodbye to 2008 with this statement. And I'm Ben Mankiewicz from Turner Classic Movies. Starting off my list at number 10, the best superhero movie since Superman. But it isn't the well-crafted The Dark Knight, but rather John Favreau's Iron Man which gave us a new brand of superhero, a brilliant wise guy entrepreneur, not motivated by revenge, thank God, but by circumstance. Robert Downey Jr. is funny, frenetic, and refreshingly honest. What's going on here? Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. Are those bullet holes? At number nine, an uplifting comedy from one of the most creative directors working today. Happy Go Lucky star Sally Hawkins as Poppy, a 30-year-old teacher who finds just about everything hysterically funny. In lesser hands, this might be nothing more than a pedestrian comedy. With Mike Lee directing Hawkins, it's not a feel-good comedy, but rather a comedy that literally makes us feel good. Your boots are inappropriate for a driving lesson. Why? What's wrong with them? You can't control a car in high heels. Oh, no, I could do a lot of things in these. You should see me in these babies on a dance floor. Well, they may be good on a dance floor. <laughs> no, they're not just good on a dance floor. They are. Ooh. Number eight, Alan Ball's powerful adaptation of Alicia Arian's novel, Towelhead. Summer Bashiel plays a 13-year-old Arab-American girl who moves to Houston with her Lebanese father during the first Gulf War. They naturally encounter racism, but in turn after turn of textured subtlety, we start to see bigotry where we don't expect it. You're not to see that boy again. You understand? You can't come over, you're black. Don't make me out to be a racist when I have your best interest at heart. This film is powerful and it navigates some sexually dangerous waters, which I think sadly scared some people off. Aaron Eckhart effectively plays a very flawed neighbor, but the real star is Bashir, who delivers an Oscar-worthy performance in a film that will receive no Oscar consideration. <laughs> but it's on your list of the 10 best movies of the year. So I, can't, uh, I can't fault everyone else's taste. Well, look, Iron Man was so close to making my list. I, too, absolutely loved John Favreau's take on it. He did something that's really difficult. He catered to those hardcore fans of the comic. I actually am a huge fan of Tony Stark and, and the Iron Man series, but catered to all of us, but then was able to sort of cross the film Gosh, over to a wider to audience. I mean, my boss. mother liked this story. movie. At number 10 on my list is In Bruges, a creative and forgotten dark comedy from earlier in the year and opened the Sundance Film Festival. The unlikely pairing of Brendan Gleeson and the surprisingly funny Colin Farrell, they play hitmen assigned to a job in one of the most boring places on earth, Bruges, a city in Belgium. It's the film's wonderfully suspenseful and intense third act that makes the movie stand out, thanks in large part to a menacing performance from Ray Fiennes. If you go outside and round the corner, you can shoot at me from there and try and get me. I'll go outside then which way, right or left? You go right, don't you? Okay, on account of one, two, three, go. Who says it? Oh, you say it. You guys are crazy. One, two, three, go! At number nine, I've got Miracle at St. Anna. One of the great filmmakers of our time, Spike Lee directs his first war film and pays homage to the classic Italian films that have influenced him over the years. The story centers on four young men, members of the famed 92nd Infantry, known as the Buffalo Soldiers, after they are embedded in Italy in 1945. American. A young and inspired cast, including Get Derek Luke, Omar Benson Miller, Laz Alonzo, and Michael Ely, portray these forgotten American heroes. I don't know how the hell we got past German lines, but we're surrounded. You ain't got to be scared. Feel that magic. All you got to do is believe in it. My number eight pick this year is The Reader. It's that rare film that effortlessly changes gears and never once leaves the audience in the dust. Dark secrets, deep betrayal, and a passionate, forbidden love affair lead to one tense moment after another. My name is Hannah Schmitz. You joined the SS in 1943. They were looking for guards. Each of the guards would choose a certain number of women. In the evening, Hannah Schmitz asked them to join her. She was making these women read aloud to her. Ray Fiennes, in his second appearance on my list this year, is once again outstanding, as is the young actor David Cross, who falls for the older, absolutely beautiful Kate Winslet, who, after being nominated some five times over the years for an Oscar, 
finally deserves to win one for this movie. Yeah, I agree with you uh, on The Reader. I agree with you on Ray Fiennes. By the way, The Duchess, which is on neither of our lists. Came close he, on my list, too, and though. And he's so good in that. Let's talk about one he's in, In Bruges, my number 11 movie, like you with the Iron Man almost making the list. I thought In Bruges was just terrific. And I did like the third act where Ray Fiennes uh, comes back. I it nice to see Colin Farrell being funny? It's like he the was, first time I've seen him playing hilarious. He was cinema. terrific. It'll make you reassess what you think about Colin Farrell as an actor, because he's clearly capable of good stuff. He's terrific here along with Brendan Gleeson. Coming up next, Bank Heist, High Wire Act. Plus, a caped crusader makes the list of the best films of the year. Rachel's told me everything about you. I certainly hope not. Troubled rock star Johnny Quid is missing a soon dead. All right, Johnny? If he's dead, that's the third time this year. I'm dead, Pete. Dead people don't like company. Your boy ain't dead, is he? Find it. We're counting down the best films of 2008, and my next two picks form my hipster London gangster exacta at number seven, Guy Ritchie's Rock and Roller. This is what happens when a good story comes together with a good director and a great ensemble cast. You get a pretty perfect movie, thrilling, funny, memorable. The interwoven story of low-life gangsters trying to crack the big money London real estate market could have lost its way, but it never did. Suffice to say, this is Guy Ritchie's best film. Well, what do you want? You. Dance? You're a dancer. Am I a dancer? At number six, Roger Donaldson's The Bank Job, based on the most famous bank robbery in British history. It's 1971 London. Jason Statham leads a gang of small-time London crooks, con men, and thieves recruited to rob a Baker Street bank. They can pretty much keep what they steal as long as they turn over the contents of a safe deposit box containing embarrassing photos of the royal family. The cast is great, but the crackling chemistry between Statham and Saffron Burroughs is the highlight of this terrific caper move. You've always been looking for the big score, the one that makes sense of everything. I have it for you. What? A bank. A bank, as in Rob. <laughs> My number five pick is the best documentary of 2008, James Marsh's Remarkable Man on Wire. It's the story of Frenchman Philippe Petit, who in 1974 snuck into the South Tower of the World Trade Center one night and the next morning walked on a wire to the North Tower and back eight times. I figured I was watching something that somebody else would never see again in the world. Thought it was once in a lifetime. Life should be lived on the edge. This is what we're here for. See every day as a true challenge, and then you live your life on the tightrope. Marsh, the director, says he thought of this not as a documentary, but a heist movie, and he's essentially right. It is just a great film. You've got a lot of good heist movies on, yeah. on your list this year. One I want to talk about in particular is The Bank Job. You know, Jason Statham gets a bad rap because we're reviewing films like Transporter 3 on this show, and this is obviously something completely different. It shows with good material and a good supporting cast, like Saffron Burroughs, who needs to be working more. He can really be a, a movie star. I think he's a tremendously underrated actor. I agree with you. Well, this was the year that saw vampire culture rise to the top of popular culture, thanks to the huge success of Everything Twilight and the popularity of True Blood on HBO. The best from the world of neckbiters and bloodsuckers, though, came to moviegoers via Sweden. With my number seven pick, Let the Right One In. Like Twilight, it's a love story between a young boy and a peculiar little girl who happens to feast on human blood. Are you gammal? I'm 12 years old. But I've been long. Are you a vampire? Had you thought of me then? At number six on my list from director Ron Howard, it's Frost Nixon. This is not a biopic on the disgraced president, but rather a revealing behind-the-curtain style approach to the famous interviews that shocked the nation between Richard Nixon and British TV personality David Frost. It's amazing to watch Frank Langella, who despite not looking or sounding like the former president in real life, is uncanny in the role on screen. Michael Sheen, as Frost, makes this powerful duel between two dynamic personalities so engaging and absorbing. Except only one of us can win. Yes. And I shall be your fiercest adversary. I shall come at you with everything I got. At number five on my list, arguably the greatest comic book movie ever made, it's The Dark Knight. An event movie in every sense of the word that entertains and makes you think this is a groundbreaking achievement in filmmaking. The use of IMAX cameras was simply outstanding and Heath Ledger's reinvention of the Joker was nothing short of masterful. Now there's a Batman. Oh, you wanna play? Come on. You know, 
know, Ben, obviously, I, I did like The Dark Knight, but I really think people, and you included, are overreacting massively to this movie, and I thought those last 30 minutes were actually weak, and so that's why I didn't come close no, to putting see, this I movie on my Aaron, top ten list. I think it's Aaron Eckhart's arc as Harvey Dent, Two-Face, that really make, completes this that's film, and it's not just the duel between the Joker and Batman. He's probably in, in the film more than anybody else, and it needed to wrap up at the end. I didn't want them to just leave it conveniently for the next film. They, no, they, they closed just, it. This was so much setting up a sequel. This felt like an artificial addition to this movie just to set up a sequel, and I didn't believe that that's how Harvey Dent would have behaved Two-Face or not. When we come back, some Oscar favorites and some breakout performances. What As we continue counting down our list of the best movies of 2008. I want you to give this to your little guy. It's a, it's a Randy the Ram action figure. <laughs> Tell him not to lose it. It's a $300 collector's item. Really? No. <laughs> come on, hey, one beer. Mank and I are counting down the best movies of 2008 and a devastating performance that resurrected a career holds down my number four spot. When director Darren Aronofsky wanted Mickey Rourke to play Randy the Ram in this intense, stripped-down character study of a professional wrestler in the twilight of his career, nobody wanted to put up the money. He's finished, they said. How about Nick Cage? Well, thankfully, Aronofsky stuck to his guns because Rourke is absolutely born to play this role. He adds a tough tenderness to the part, and so much of his own life struggles and demons shine through the character. I'm an old, broken-down piece of meat. And I'm alone. And I deserve to be all alone. I just don't want you to hate me. At number three on my list is Gus Van Sant's Milk. The idea is politician Harvey Milk believed in and spoke so passionately about for so many years on the campaign trail are just as relevant today. That's a big reason why Milk, starring Sean Penn in an Oscar-worthy performance, is such a powerful film. We need one of our own in office. We could have a revolution. Here. I don't do losing. If we're gonna beat this thing. We need everyone. If Mickey Rourke was the breakout performance from this year's Toronto International Film Festival, then my number two pick, Slumdog Millionaire, was the breakout film. It's been riding an incredible wave of unparalleled positive word of mouth and never-ending praise ever since. Director Danny Boyle, that Absolutely rare filmmaker right. who can direct across genres, has given us the feel-good movie of the year. Now, I usually don't like that phrase. It's too often casually thrown around, but it's never felt so appropriate as it does when describing Slumdog. Dev Patel and Frida Pinto are stars on the rise. Doctors, lawyers never get beyond 16,000 rupees. He's on 10 million. What can our Slumdog possibly know? We went on the show because I thought she'd be watching. She's my destiny. Creativity in this movie's simple premise makes for a fulfilling movie-going experience. Just a wonderful film that everybody should see. All right, at number four, as good a biopic as Hollywood can produce, Ben already mentioned it, Sean Penn as Harvey Milk in Milk. It takes about 60 seconds to forget this is Sean Penn playing Harvey Milk. There's plenty of talking in this performance, but it is Penn's moments of silence, his eyes, his expressiveness, that often best conveys the essence of Harvey Milk. I don't say this often. This film could have been better if it were longer, but a movie leaving you wanting more is a rare treasure. If you say anything about politics or the campaign or what speech you have to give or anything, I swear to God I'm going to stab you with this fork. I just wanted to say that this is the most wonderful dinner I have ever had. <laughs> At number three, maybe the best single performance of the year. Kate Winslet and Stephen Daldry's The Reader. Ben had it at number eight on his list. Winslet does what only an actor of her capability can accomplish. She plays a 36-year-old German woman who seduces a 15-year-old boy. For sex, sure, but also to get him to read to her. Then we learn she was also a Nazi guard. So sexual predator and Nazi, yet she evokes from the audience genuine sympathy. Daldry and screenwriter David Hare get credit for that too, but this tragic yet surprisingly hopeful story is a showcase for Winslet's rare talent. I can't live without you. Even the thought of it kills me. Do you love me? You were picking women out and saying, you and you and you have to be sent back to be killed. No, no. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I feel. The dead are still dead. 
And number two on my list, Ron Howard's Frost Nixon, which is not really a political film. As Ben told you, it's the story of British TV personality David Frost's series of interviews with Nixon three years after Watergate. But you do them because they're in the greater interests of the nation. Right, wait, just so I understand correctly. Are you really saying that in certain situations, the president can decide whether it's in the best interests of the nation and then do something illegal? I'm saying that when the president does it, that means it's not illegal. Frank Langella gets the headlines, but that's Michael Sheen so no, underappreciated as David saying, Frost. It's been a great year for political films at the box office. I know you mentioned that Frost Nixon isn't necessarily a traditional political film, but obviously touches sure. on political themes, and Milk was tremendous on both of our lists, and a movie that came really close for me was W. Josh Brolin, fantastic in that as yeah, well. Great year for Josh Brolin there in particular in W and Milk. Coming up next, we each make our pick for the absolute best movie of 2008. All right, we've racked our brains to come up with the best films of the year, and the time has finally come to name the one that takes them all. For me, it's The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. A beautiful and epic exploration of life and death, love and friendship. It's a story that can only exist in the movies that makes you think deeply and passionately about your own life. We are almost the same age. We're meeting in the middle. I thought I caught up with each other. Wait. I want to remember us just as we are now. Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett's performances are larger than life, yet feel incredibly personal and intimate. The film is technically flawless, a benchmark in special effects work. Director David Fincher's use of Viper cameras and motion capture technology is groundbreaking as he gracefully helms this modern masterpiece. This is what going to the movies is all about, and why there's nothing better than the experience of seeing a great one on the big screen. A little surprised it didn't make your list, but then I realized you said to see Beverly Hills Chihuahua, so it all makes sense. I was very close on The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. It was among those three or four movies that very nearly cracked the list. The amazing thing is not so much for me the aging of Brad Pitt, but the sizing of Brad Pitt, that he could be four foot two and on stage with actors, and you're like, man, that's Brad Pitt. How have they knocked a foot and a half off his height? Really, a, a very solid film. I had a tough time putting this list together. Left out a lot of good films. But picking number one was easy for me. It's Darren Aronofsky's The Wrestler. Ben also had it fourth on his list. But it even ranks higher for me because Mickey Rourke is so believable as Randy the Ram Robinson. A wrestler trying desperately to hang on to his glory days 20 years earlier. A lot of people told me that I'd never wrestle again. The only one going to tell me when I'm through doing my thing, is you people here. Aronofsky manages to relate in every scene a sense of Rourke's clinging to his past while somehow simultaneously hoping for a bright future. It is a depressing world, but enriched by the Rams' infectious spirit. It's the role of Rourke's career with a big assist coming from Marissa Tomei and an unglamorous role as the object of Randy's affection stripper named Cassidy, I thought she was great. You know, it's one of those movies, you lose yourself in Randy the Ram, and, and you think of all the wrestlers that you grow up watching and what they're doing now, and this really captures that, and it's just a, an underdog story and a great film. What a great job, what a great piece of direction this is for Darren Aronofsky. We'll be back to recap our complete list of the best films of 2008, and we'll tell you which of these movies is available right now on DVD. Closed captioning for At The Movies is sponsored by... Cooks know the freshest mushrooms have tightly closed caps. And the freshest tasting tomatoes say Hunt's on the can. Because Hunt's is the only leading brand to flash steam every tomato. So they always taste fresh from the vine. Hunt's. Perfectly natural. Perfectly delicious. Hotel provided by Park Hyatt Chicago. Chicago's award-winning hotel and luxury dining experience. Located in the heart of Chicago's magnificent mile on Water Tower Square. Okay, time to recap our list for the best movies of 2008. At number 10, I have Iron Man. Number 9, Happy Go Lucky. Eight, Towelhead. Seven, Rock and Roll. Number 6, The Bank Job. Five, Man on Wire. At number 4, Milk. Number 3, The Reader. Two, Frost Nixon. And at number 1, The Wrestler. My list starts at number 10, oh God, In sorry. Bruges. No, no, at 9, Miracle at St. Anna. Number 8, The Reader. Number 7, Let the Right One In. 
Six, Frost Nixon. I promise At you. five, the, the Dark Knight. Is coming. Number four, The Wrestler. At three, it's Milk. Number two, yes. Slumdog Millionaire. And number one, my favorite film of the year, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. So out of all the movies we talked about today on our lists, here are the films available right now on DVD. The Bank Job, The Dark Knight, Iron Man, In Bruges, Towel Head, and Man on Wire. To revisit our picks for the best movies of the year, go to atthemoviestv.com. Next week, we'll be back with our special show, The Worst of 2008. It's going to be a lot of fun. And until then, we'll be at the movies. My Bliss? Blistex Complete Moisture. A rush of moisture lips can feel. And it feels great. Discover Bliss. Discover Blistex. The rhinovirus, a leading cause of the common cold. Why just cover up the symptoms of your cold when you can get over your cold faster with Zycam? I want my coffee to taste like this, sweet and low. You know, you can't beat pig, pal. But you probably know that. Choose Plum Smart. It's clinically proven to help regulate your digestion with a unique blend of prebiotic fiber, magnesium, and potassium. Plum Smart and Plum Smart Light from Sunsweet.